Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We'll go to question for Mark. Well, if you look at uh, if you look at the uh, importance of the, the different components you have uh, in the ease of doing business for local investors, for a number of them, uh, electricity might be one of the major challenges. What do you tell those uh, who still look to you know part the power situation improving, especially in the nearest future? Thank you for the question. Um, I think. Um the power sector, the Honorable Minister of Power is hard at work and he's rolled out his map. Um, but for ease of doing business, we look at the amount of time and cost for getting connected to the grid for a new SME. So that's one of the, the criteria that we're trying to work on. It, ha it took a huge number of days, a, a quite a few processes. So we're streamlining that. In fact, the Minister has already given out a directive to reduce the processes to five uh, from nine over nine and the discos are cooperating NERC is on it so there's quite a bit of work going on in that area it's actually one of the things that we've done within the 60-day timeline yeah so they'll see at least some relief from getting connected so what, within what a reasonable time can they look forward to shorter time a shorter time to get connected onto the grid yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if they're connected to the grid and not getting very good supply, what can they do? The Honourable Minister of Power is on that. There's a roadmap that has been set out, and we all know the issues with the power sector. We know the the disco issues, the Genco issues. So what we can do is to make sure that the bit that is within our control is sorted out. We don't need to compound those systemic issues that we already know are there. We need to try and take care of the ease with which if you want to register, if you need any assessment, if you need to pay, we lump all those together and make sure it's simple and easy and stressless, which is what we've done. I'm just wondering, you know, if you're an average business person right now, I know that the federal government is quite pleased in terms of how, you know, the work that they're doing on the ease of doing business is moving. Uh, you know, we're hearing of the visa policy, the FX policy, they're looking forward to a convergence, and that looks to be looking good on the outside. But what can the average businessman, say, who's been in business for a while, say the person who makes uh, who packages water, for instance, what effect would you say that they can feel as a result of the work that has been going on at the top? So they are actually a primary focus. Um, people that are trying to do business in Nigeria, simple businesses, small businesses that um, maybe less than 60 employees. And we've taken systematically saying paying taxes, simpler process, e-filing, in starting a business, a single form, you can upload your documents. Um, in access to credit, trying to make sure that they have credit history so that banks can fund them. In uh, getting electricity, we're trying to make sure that the, the bureaucratic bottlenecks to actually accessing the grid are reduced and removed. Um, what other area? Several things targeted at removing little things. And I'll say again that this is just the beginning. We're not even happy yet. There's nothing, I mean, our, our scorecard is the testimonials of Nigerians. When Nigerian businesses start telling us that they've noticed the impact of the adjustments that we're making, then we'll start getting pleased. Right now we've just, we have feedback mechanisms. Yeah. Okay. Um, the CEO of O's, you mm -hmm. talked about the states mm -hmm. and you want to do things with mm -hmm. states. How, what is in place? Because states take almost forever to sign CFOs for people. Yes. We're working closely, as you know, we're a federation, but we're working closely, particularly with Lagos and Kano State. Lagos State is already trying to half the number of days to access a CFO, uh, to get a CFO from, I think, it's about 70 days now, down to about 30 days. And they have actual steps that they've put in place electronic signing by the governor. They have a process and we've been working closely with them to review the process and just support however we can to make sure that time and cost, those are the two things, come down for Nigerians. Also Kano State, in fact, the Kano State governor attended the last council meeting, the PEBEC meeting on Tuesday. And, and again there, he has uh, taken it as a challenge 
to reduce these things. Also getting construction permits, that's another big one in the state domain. So uh, let's talk a little more about uh, the volatility of uh, businesses and the reasons why they have left the, the country. Your mm -hmm. job is to try to create a more enabling environment to mm -hmm. get them back. Mm -hmm. But uh, how are you able to uh, do that as against getting in touch with them still to uh, let them see the positives more? Oh, actually, there's somebody wholly dedicated to that. Her name is Yurande Sadiku. She's the new executive secretary, not so new anymore, of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission. And that is her primary mandate. And again, she's focused primarily, first of all, on the deep pockets that we have in Nigeria. We have wealthy Nigerians that invest across Africa and internationally. And she believes that when we have them believing in the Nigerian economy, then if you toot your own horn, then other people... See, Nigeria has not really um, lacked foreign investment. In fact, to a large extent, uh, foreign investors, once they have a risk appetite and a long-term view, they're really quite happy because of our market size. We don't appreciate the things that we have going for us. We have a huge market size. We have young demographic. We have a great geographical location. We have a great climate. There's so many things and so many areas, fast-moving consumer goods, agribusiness. There's so many things we have going. But because we're here and we're in it, Nigerians don't actually see the Nigerian economy the way some other people see it. That's why with the bad business rankings, we still were grossing a lot of FDI, and of course we have oil. But what we want to do is to make sure that there's an opportunity cost, that we, we were leaving cash on the table. If FDI could come into the country, even with the difficult business climate, think how much more FDI would come in if our business climate was as easy as Singapore. All right, let me try and squeeze these two things in before we wrap up. Um, multiple taxation mm -hmm. and the police. <laughs> okay. Now, I'll take um, multiple taxation is directly related. I think at a federal level, um, Mr. Fowler has been working on streamlining and making sure that the processes for filing are much easier. Of course, a lot of the taxes are doubled up at the state level. And because he used to be at a state level, we're actually working with Lagos State to try and see how we can even consolidate some of the payments and split them back end. So the, the SME is just paying one lump sum, and then tax authorities, joint tax board need to talk about it, see how. So these are some of the things that we've seen in other countries. And you split it back end. The, pay, the payer is just paying once and feels a lot more relieved than being harassed by different people. And then you know what the breakdown is. So those are some of the reforms that we're working on. And we hope you'll be seeing some, some changes in the coming months. And then the final one. Police, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> Generally, transparency and integrity is key to the administration. And that includes people not feeling harassed, whether by police or any other regulator whether it's NCC, whether it's NOTAP, whether it's NERC, whichever. No business should feel harassed. We're not adverse regulators and we're not competitors. We're here to serve. We're here to make things easier. And we're here to give good customer service as government agencies. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's a fine place to leave it. Uh, Dr. Jumoke Odoole is a Senior Special Assistant to the President on Trade and Investment. Thank you for coming on this morning. Pleasure. All right, so that's it for now, but uh, just give us a moment and we'll be back.